Hey, this is Jill Simonella with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today we are driving the Hyundai Palisade, and this is refreshed for the 2023 model year. So what we are gonna do in this video is we are gonna do a quick walk around of what is new and uh, just kind of do a little deep dive into the vehicle. So let's take a closer look right now. with the exterior of the vehicle because I think this has a lot bolder and more aggressive look to it. And it all starts with this grill, this new grill that is bigger, wider, more aggressive and toothier. Totally using that word. Um, but another big change is going to be the lighting signature. You have the daytime running light that sweeps around like this and then you have your headlights actually right there. This looks a lot edgier than the previous generation, I guess I shouldn't say generation, the previous iteration of the Palisade. Um, this is just a refresh, but I think this looks a lot more aggressive and definitely um, edgier. And, and frankly, I think this makes me think more of the Telluride than the old Palisade because it just, yeah, I really like that and you can see it coming from a mile away. As you walk around to the back of the vehicle, this is the side um, mirror um, indicator. So when you've got your blinkers on, it'll show up there. And then coming around to the back, you also have a different tail light structure for a more aggressive upright um, tail light here. And again, this makes me think of Telluride. And I find that interesting because I feel like the Palisade got a little edgier with its design, yet the Telluride did not. It went a little bit more mainstream. Now, something else that's going to be different on this vehicle for 2023 is this rear bumper because that will give you um, a, a new way to hook up for your tow hitch. So you've got a different rear bottom bumper there um, to make it better, easier for your towing. point out as we look around this vehicle is this is a calligraphy trim. So some of the features that you see on this model are not going to be available at other trim levels because this is a top tier trim. But here's the good news. You can get this trim and all of this good stuff for less than $50,000. The price for the calligraphy trim is at about $48,000. And I think that's pretty impressive when you see everything you get because this is basically a WYSIWYG vehicle, which means what you see is what you get. And all of these up-level amenities, um, including the dual automatic climate controls and the heated and ventilated seats, as well as the heated steering wheel, that is standard at this trim. So let's take a look at some of the other features. I know a lot of people lately have been obsessed with the Hyundai steering wheel, and I, this is one of the newer steering wheels. It has the butterfly look here in the center, and I really like it. I, I, I don't mind the roundness of it, and I'm a person who drives at nine and three, so I like the little thumb pad here for your hands. But what I think is really good about this is there are different grip points. So depending on how you like to hold the steering wheel, you have different ways to hold it, and I think that is all good stuff. Behind the wheel, you have a completely digital cluster, and that means you're also going to get the blind view monitoring uh, with turning on your blinker, so hitting your blinker stock, and then you can um, see the camera um, that shows you what's going on in your blind spot, depending upon which side you are looking at. That is definitely a fan favorite that you will not see in every model. Then you have this 12.3 inch screen. Uh, I do believe you will see this in every model. This is the upgraded screen, but what that means is since this upgraded screen is throughout the lineup, you no longer have wireless Apple CarPlay in any Palisade. You have to wire in with this updated unit um, to use Apple CarPlay. 
We did ask during the presentation if wireless Apple CarPlay was coming and they said they're working on it. So just know it's still a work in progress. But the one interesting thing that they did say specifically with regard to wireless Apple CarPlay is the fact that when you have a more advanced head unit like this, the development time is longer. So it takes longer to get a feature like that in the system than it does if you are using the smaller head unit, which is um, less tech forward. And so it makes it easier, easier, which is weird, to put wireless CarPlay in that. So not here yet, but hopefully coming for this 12.3 inch screen. So speaking of the 12.3 inch screen, I will point out this is a touch screen um, and everything is really easy to um, deal with and touch and it doesn't lag. I didn't feel like it had lag. So yeah, I like how that looks. And it does not have redundant controls. So a lot of um, Genesis vehicles that we've seen, which is the luxury arm of um, Hyundai, they have redundant like a touch controller here that you can either touch or use the controller this doesn't have that. What it does have is push button gearing. Um, that is not new. Uh, and one of the reasons I love the push button gearing is the fact that it gives you an extra space below this floating console to store some stuff. So small purse, bag, takeaway, I, I don't know, running shoes. I could put my running shoes down there. Maybe you couldn't put your running shoes. I can put mine down there because they're size fives. Um, but you can put some things in there. And I like that it, it's just another little storage space that, you know, you're not putting stuff on the passenger seat. This also does have some upgraded ambient lighting. So you can see it's a little bit rainy, so we can see the ambient lighting um, a little bit. And how you get to that is you come into your infotainment, you hit setup, you hit vehicle, and then um, you scroll down into lights. And um, over here, then you can touch your ambient lighting. And so you can control the brightness, but what I really like is you can also control the color and you have a lot of different color options that are already there um you know from the green um you can see that green showed up that's not as bright um, in this light but uh you can also set your custom color which i've always really appreciated because i really kind of tend towards pink so you can set your custom color and then yep it shows up there so some uh, more um you know aggressive ambient lighting you also have this right here, which is a digital camera mirror. And um, so you flip it like that and you have your regular woo, reflection going on. You see my phone recording. But um, <laughs> what I really like about this mirror is the resolution is incredibly good. We were out on a trail, we got really dirty and dusty and it was hard to see out of the, the rear window, but I put this on and everything was clear. You have a wide screen and you have much better visibility because you, you know your window is like meh, that big. But then with this, you can see that much. So I really appreciate this new feature here. Um, and, and I don't always like the rear camera mirror. Let me be clear about that because it's not always this clear or this good, but this one, this one is a good one and it doesn't vibrate and um, there isn't really any residual fuzziness and I appreciate that. One more thing that is new for 2023 has to do with your seating controls. So your seating controls are right here and right above them, there is a button and when you press it, this happens. You have ergo motion seats, which is just a fancy way of saying you have seat massagers. So you can cycle through the different areas of massage. Um, you can turn it off. Uh, I personally prefer the whole body massage, but the really interesting thing about these ergo motion seats is they turn on automatically after an hour of driving. So looking at the back seat, the first thing I'm going to point out is you have captain's chairs back here, and these are going to be standard in your calligraphy trim. But these are amazing captain's chairs and there's a lot of good stuff on here, including this headrest. So this is gonna be new for 2023 that you can kind of contour and move to adjust. So if you wanted to sleep, you could move this and then just kind of lean your head up against here. And that is a pretty neat idea. You see it on airplanes a lot, but I don't know that I've ever seen it on a car. We'll move over here and you do have your rear sunshade. So that's uh, always a good feature, especially live if you live in a place where there's a lot of sunshine, which obviously today is not that day here in North Carolina, but uh, I, like, I like the option. Um, and this has a dual pane moonroof. And I find that fascinating. This doesn't have a full 
panoramic moonroof, but it has a dual pane moonroof. And this actually is a manual operation, whereas this has a mechanical operation. And it's not able to be uh, maneuvered from the second row. You actually have to use this unit here in the front row to open or close that unit. So moving over here, you have rear HVAC controls. This is quite lovely because look at this here. You have heated seats, but you have cooled seats too. There are a lot of luxury vehicles we've looked at recently that don't even have heated seats and they're more than $60,000. Um, but this has both heated and cooled seats um, and, and they're variable. So it's not like they're on or they're off. You can actually set the temperature a little bit. So you can, um, speaking of temperature, you can change your temperature. So you can make it warmer or colder back here. Really wish I had that as a kid because I was always cold. Um, and then you have a power jack here and then you have USB-C ports here in your seat back. So the heated and ventilated seats are unique to this segment. Um, you know, this isn't this isn't a luxury vehicle, and so it's really unique to this segment. No other um, three-row SUV of this size has those in this class. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, something else I'll point out, and this is kind of interesting. It's a little device holder, little pocket if you want to just put your cell phone or your tablet tablet in the sides of these seats. And I think that is pretty impressive. You have your armrests. So also good. And you can also see the ambient lighting really well back here. One thing I do find interesting is you have your cup holders in the door, which is really great until you have an open bottle and you try and shut your door. <laughs> um, and looking around, I don't see cup holders any place else that aren't on the door. So um, I don't know, maybe you could put a bottle here, but um, that's interesting. I do like the door location. It's really convenient, you know, when you're, you're sitting in your seat and you can just, you know, you've got your bottle right there, but um, yeah, just don't put a cup of coffee there and shut your door. That would explode. All right, we're gonna go back to the third row because that's where there is something else really unique on this vehicle. All right, before I get into the unique thing, the first thing I'm gonna point out is I have a decent amount of foot and leg room back here. Now keep in mind, I'm about the size of a 10 year old, but that's frankly who you wanna put back here. And yeah, that's really who you want to put back here, especially because they intend or give you the option of putting three people. Um, and I don't think that really works in a back seat of this size. Um, but now let's get to the really good thing. So first off, you have a USB-C port back here, but look at that. This is a third row and it has heated seats. I would have loved that as a kid. Hallelujah for the cold kid who's always freezing. Um, but yeah, so heated third row seats. We've seen that in the BMW X7 and yeah, nothing else. Um, if you know of another vehicle other than the BMW X7 that has heated third row seats, I would love to know what that vehicle is. I don't think there is one. So cup holders and um, air vents in the ceiling, which is always a bonus because especially if somebody back here is gonna get air sick, you can move them around and blow the air on your face and that's good. Um, and a window that is not super small, so you won't get claustrophobic. Um, but yeah, so that is the third row. I suppose if you did put somebody in the center here, they would have plenty of leg room, but shoulder room, not so much. Okay, this was just the quick look at the exterior and interior of the 2023 Hyundai Palisade. My driving impressions are still under embargo, so that video is still to come, so stay tuned more soon. In the meantime, you can check us out on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com and you can catch us on Twitter and Instagram at pickuptrucktalk. Also, don't forget that we do a live stream on Thursdays at 7 p.m. where we pick some topics and then we let you pick some topics and we chat about it real time. So until then, I will see you down the road.